So uh, we've been talking a lot about the um, about the differences between like uh, like the the drastic uh, quality difference between uh, Triple Trouble 16-bit and Sonic XG, right? Well, here's the thing. Um, I was actually uh, lucky enough that the creator of uh, XG actually reached out to me on the YouTube videos and everything. So, uh, and he actually gave us a lot of, um, like, a lot of insight into why the game kind of turned out the way it did. And, like, it looked like it had so much promise, but then all that promise seemed to have got translated to uh, Triple Trouble, uh, or Triple Trouble 16-bit. So it's like, so what really happened to XG? Well, with a lot of what he said, uh, I feel like this will sort of reveal um, kind of some of the mystery behind it. But the first thing I do have to say is, uh, I guess I'll just read his first comment here, um, because it was on the uh, first playthrough. So, um, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and bring up XG first. Nope, oh, there was that rare Easter egg. Right then. All right, all right. So it's capturing. Um, okay. So yeah, like I was saying, um, uh, on on his YouTube is uh, the first station. This was the best. Yeah, Final Fall was pretty amazing, and that's the one most people know. So yeah, as I had said uh, before, the reason I want to bring up XG again is because uh, Raiz one three six on YouTube, aka um, uh, Nightmare. Uh, as he's known, uh, the game's creator actually uh, reached out um, on on the, uh, the the Sonic playthrough, and uh, he actually gave us a lot more insight into uh, what was happening. So the first thing, there was something for the life of us we couldn't figure out on the game, and that was the hard part skipper. So I'm actually going to read his quotes, um, read his comments live uh, here on stream, and uh, probably have them in a brief video as well, because I do feel like it's necessary to uh, to talk about this. So, he says, uh, I apologize for the confusion that the hard part skipper in Furious Finale 1 uh, had created. Probably should in, uh, pro I probably should uh, include something in the controls text file about what it means by the text that it gives you, as I can't expect everyone to have played the tutorial level from the ROM hack Sonic Eraser, which I do actually remember. For the life of me, I couldn't remember where I'd seen this before, but I know I had seen it somewhere. So, he says, 234 is in reference to the click team, which is like what uh, XG is coded with. The click team action button or fires, defaulting to Z, X, and C. Holding these three buttons at once while your character is overlapping the device will drain your rings but teleport you to the boss level, uh, both the activation and result uh, matching its functionality in the ROM hack in question. Uh, it isn't meant to be there, so to speak. It's meant to be to address the complaints I'd received from my testers prior to the leaked build getting released and me updating it afterwards. Uh, for Furious Finale Part 1's high difficulty until it gets a proper level design, gimmicks, and bosses. Once that is done, it won't be there anymore. So that actually makes a lot more sense. Um, so what we... Uh, I'll get to his uh, next comment in a moment, which will answer a lot of your questions about why we saw um, Sonic and Knuckles sort of being the way that they were um, in this game. But... Uh, so if we go into uh, Furious Finale 1 and try it, it should work. So I did want to showcase this since he actually went out of his way to uh, talk about it. Also heard the Sonic Roblast 2 theme. Yep, yep, for some reason XG just has the SRB2 theme uh, in the title. I, I don't know why they put it there, but uh, I, I guess M said it best. No matter what, you can never truly escape SRB2. But yeah, th this level requires you to go all the way through with a water shield, which was kind of cool. So you, you can tell he was actually listening to complaints, but, you know, and, and he is playing on, like, you know, eventually, like, putting in, like, I guess, updated level design here. Maybe that's for, like, you know, once he gets better sort of, um, like, better tools to use with this. So anyway, he said apparently it drains your rings, but anyway, this is what he was talking about. So apparently, you gotta go here, and when we're overlapping, hold 2, 3, and 4. Maybe all of them? I guess, oh, maybe you need, you must need rings. Oh. 
Oop. Well, I have seven. How many do I need? Oh, that's death. Are there any rings there? Oh, the jump sound effect from Spin when you cling to the wall? Yes. Yes, he actually did put that there. I, I, that was a nice effect. I like that. Imagine if you needed 234 ring. No, I don't think that's it. It could be that I was just holding the wrong thing, because I think Fire 2 is mapped to X. It could be... It could be XCV instead. I wonder if it, like, switched to that. Because I know X is Fire 2. Either you need rings, or... Hi, Metal. How's it going? Either you need rings, or I'm just pressing the wrong buttons. Oop. Okay. So, what if I try, instead of ZXC, what if I try XCV? Oh! It is XCV! That's what I thought. My bad. Wrong button combo. So that's how that works, apparently. And we just... Now we just go right to the boss. Which, for some reason, triggers when we're super as well. More spinball influence once again. Hail Mary! Aw! Oh. oh, well, it did give me the checkpoint with my shield again. Alright. And then, Drac, I don't know if you actually saw the end of the game, but... Oh, now the bubble's working! But why does it that now make it work? I don't understand. This game is so confusing sometimes. There's always something with this game. The, the way I bounce off of him is weird. Why does the hard part skipper trigger the boss, but sometimes it just does not want to want to trigger? He's off screen, I cannot hit him. Come here, buddy. Uh, okay. No, I didn't say jump. What are you doing? Game you selling? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Drac, if you haven't seen the ending, I should just point out, like, show you what it's like. I will say Furious Finale 1 has some, has a very weird, very, very strange uh, composition choices. The whole game just had strange design choices, honestly. Yeah, it is, it is a very strange ending. So anyway, you clear it, and then it if you have all the emeralds, it triggers something. So then, we were flabbergasted by this the first time. 
So I had collected all the emeralds and even did all the bonus stages, which looks like they were extra emeralds too. Um, uh, but the strange thing about this is like, yeah, at the, at the very end, it's just all like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, Tails died when you weren't looking, so go back to Cosmic Chasm. I'm like, wait, there were time stones in this? When? Anyway, so you, you go back to Cosmic, and the, the save file is glowing also, I noticed that too. But if you go into your regular save file, the no save, sorry. You go to Cosmic Chasm, what they actually expect you to do... Was just, you know, go back through here and uh, take damage. Very important part was taking damage. I'm so used to drop dashing, but I don't have that now. I'm sad. But yeah, you head back here, and then you're, you, you, you touch this thing, which made a clone of Sonic in the level to help you, like, you know, get through some puzzles. It's like, oh yeah! The, 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 this nondescript, like, gem that looked kind of like a super emerald like a clone of Sonic. I didn't just need to touch this. Oh, yeah. And and now I have, yeah, a clone of myself. Let's let's press fire 2 and beat the final boss again. Because reasons. They also have the spin ball, spin dash sound effect, which is good. Uh, wait. Wait. S guys, Supersonic Sprite is slightly angled the wrong way. What happened? What did I do to break it this time? How did I break it this time? Okay, now he's normal. Oh, he dead. So yeah, we needed the Super Sonic clone because apparently Metal Sonic was trying to drown Tails, but oh yo, here we, 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 we rescued him. He's good now. Anyway, Chaos Emeralds. And Angel Island's restored. Yeah, we did it! <laughs> and then, yeah, credits roll, that's it. I'm not watching the credit sequence again. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> very, very strange. Game is held together about as well as his Pika servers. Yeah, that, that's the other interesting thing, Johnny. Uh, so he did mention about Knuckles. Um, where Knuckles? Were the time, were the time stones like even talked about? No, Drac, they weren't. That's the thing. They weren't talked about at all. Like the the thing is like you know we were all jumping to conclusions like oh the game's horrible, never play it again. I don't think that's entirely fair because like the truth is. This game changed hands so many times, and Nightmare was the one that ended up picking it up and finishing it after all these years, because he just wanted to give people some form of closure on it. And given that, like, um, what he says here, it, it actually shows how much he had to struggle. I'm just going to read this quote from the Knuckles playthrough that he, you know, happened to, like, reach out about, and, and, and just literally read word for word what he said. So, uh, if you guys are wondering why, for some reason, Knuckles has his wall slam and Tails has the super clickies... This is the reason why. So, so what he says is hyperforms were planned from what I can gather from the development material I have access to, but I can only presume that the lack of thereof means uh, of allowing Sonic's palette to uh, cycle through all the emerald colors like one expects Hypersonic to do. This iteration of XG has been in the works since roughly 2006 to 2007, at the earliest, 2011 at the latest. Uh, yeah, 2006 to 2007 at the earliest, uh, 2011 at the latest. So a si it's a sizable possibility. Additionally, the lack of the uh, required after image functionality combined with the physics values behind handling uh, on a frame-by-frame -frame basis instead of globally, perhaps because uh, global events weren't a thing when most of the gameplay frames were created, seeing how most of them have signs being uh, built off of each other, uh, likely rendered Super and Hyper Knuckles uh, unable to appear any different while Super Tails, back when uh, he had the flicky army of death um, and everything, uh, remained mostly... Oh yeah, as, as he was saying, like, the, the Super Flickies, as in the Sonic 3 and Knuckles version, before it was known as Hyper Tails, which, yeah, I still call it Super Tails, uh, remained mostly unaffected aside from getting the Mania treatment of being made into a form achieved with just the Chaos Emeralds. 
Uh, my guess is that Joe and Yuan, I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, decide to compromise on not having hyperstates by giving the benefits uh, of that set to Tails and Knuckles' hyperstates, um, apart from their superstates, well, their superstates, albeit with Super Tails, Super Flicky, Flicky's functioning less like an overpowered Flicky army of death, uh, that they are infamous for being and more like a static means of anti-air defense, which, as you know, the Flickies did rotate and have, like, sort of a hitbox, so that does make sense. They basically destroy any bat they overlap with. Right. Tangent aside, and he does actually explain the bonus stages a bit here, because we were wondering, like, what was the point of them? So he said, the bonus stages are just meant to be bonus stages, similar in nature to the ones in S3 and K. So Karuba was right about that one. The only difference is that the background elements are meant to be colored after each respective Chaos Emerald. Even I don't know what it, if it was, it was meant to be an alternative means of collecting Chaos Emeralds or means of collecting the Super Emeralds, uh, as I ponder in the description, which in the description of the video I, I do mention that for reference. What little I can gather tells me that the menu used to select what, uh, what one you played uh, was either supposed to be available when you got all seven emeralds or was meant to be solely used for some sort of separate arcade mode or of some sort uh, with the stats and the whole game saves whenever you beat one of them, which again checks out because if you remember, it does save on your save file when you uh, set a record in one of those stages. Uh, he continues, regardless of those two, it was meant to be, uh, whether those two was meant to be, it appears the Chaos Emerald that was next uh, for you to collect was a specific bonus stage you'd be sent to when you tried to enter the Ring of Stars. So in other words, if you'd already collected the first Chaos Emerald, you would then be sent to the first bonus stage. Uh, bonus stage select becoming available once you got all seven emeralds. As a sort of compromise, all the bonus stages become available to play at your discretion when you have at least 25 rings on hand. Originally it was 50, and have obtained the first Chaos Emerald. So that was the workaround that he went for, apparently. Um, and he says, they look like Super Emeralds for some reason, never got a reason for that, so there just isn't one. I specifically left Doomsday alone, not editing Hypersonic into it, because I didn't want to unironically blue ball the player into thinking that Hypersonic, among the other hyperstates, are available during gameplay, when in actuality only Super States are, which that ultimately seems like the right decision, so that does make sense. He continues, if I had to guess on why Supersonic was put into Doomsday specifically, my guess would be probably because it relates to the Chaos Emeralds only ending between the Sonic and Tails ending of S3 and K, and teases the Knuckles story while the all Super Emeralds one just shows the logo with Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, which is of course how S3 and K ended. So that's it. That's uh, the answer he sort of gives us on that. Not necessarily um, the biggest amount of closure that we could uh, potentially get on that, but as I look back on that... Um, and I made sure to shout him out, as I will again here, uh, Nightmare or Raiz or how, I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, or whatever you are going by now. Listen, man, as I've said in comments, uh, I, I do have to salute you for actually, like, bringing some form of closure uh, to the game. Because, like, you know, given that it was so broken and you just wanted to act, like actually see it complete, I, I at least have to shout you out for that. Especially with the coding difficulties and outdated tools you were working with. Um, so, like, absolute shout out to you, man, and, like, thank you for finishing the game. I, my, you have my greatest sympathies for what you had to go through in getting this thing to work, and thank you for, like, and you didn't even have to, but thank you for reaching out on YouTube and actually, like, uh, telling us how the hard part skipper worked. For the life of me, I could not remember where I'd seen it before. But, um, ultimately, like, going back to that, uh... I mean, you know, I, I can only commend the guy given that, like, he chose to pick up a project that was that changed hands so many times and actually got to complete it. And for that matter, I also have to talk about um, the fact that we did uh, get a bit frustrated with some of the Sage titles that we went through this year, where many coders were, like, having their first attempt at stuff. Uh, I do have to shout you all out, the um, those who went through um, Sonic, uh, who made Sonic Horizons, as well as, what did we play earlier this week? I have to remember what was the other Sage game that we went through. Um, someone remind me again, uh, cause I'm going to bring that up as well, but to everyone who like worked on like all the games at Sage this year, it's like, despite the fact that I was like seeing like frustrations, it's like, I'm aware that like a lot of these were early attempts still had bugs. So seriously, don't let that discourage you from continuing to make fan games because y'all are absolute, absolute legends for doing what you do. And I think uh, it's important to point out with games like Project 06, Triple Trouble 16 bit. Uh, and and Sonic Battle R from time to time because so, it does have its ups and downs. We're really kind of spoiled as a Sonic community when it comes to fans making so many great games. So we often forget to appreciate the first attempts of many other coders. But don't let that diminish what you guys accomplished at Sage this year because we want to see more out of you. We want to see you guys improve. So 
an absolute shout out to all of you legends. Like, you know, thank you for doing what you do. And we hope to see you all, you know, improve in the future. Um, uh, with that being said, I guess uh, the one last thing I was kind of curious of was um, if we go into Knuckles' file and go into Final Fall, is there a way for Knuckles to get the Easter egg? And does that change anything? Um, anyway, what you want to see Knuckles? Here he is, Johnny. Some Knuckles gameplay to end. Yeah, the chaotic sprite, we love to see it. Give me that shield. Punch. I'm gonna ask you to not, sir. I forgot he was a thing. Uh, and then I think, whoa. Give it credit where it's due. You can jump out of midair, which is kind of nice. Whoa, sir, no. Oh, give me that invuln. Oh, yeah, here we are. Okay, then we get that warp ring. Super Hyper Theme is quite nice, though. And we never got to see Knuckles actually go super in uh, in the original um, in, in Knuckles Chaos uh, with his sprite, so it's kind of nice to see him have like a super form animation. Anyway, oh, oh, I'm moonwalking. And then once again, like Fang being like you know having like mini boss rushes in Knuckles story. You can really kind of see what was meant to be with, um, with, uh, like, you know, all the Triple Trouble 16-bit, uh, influences as well. Or, like, how all these influences got passed to some to Time Twisted and some to Triple Trouble 16-bit. Which, you know, was very fascinating, actually. And, of course, as you see, Knuckles has his wall slam as well. So, you know, there's the discussion of, like, um... You know, it's like, was there meant to be Hyper in the game? And uh, Nightmare does speculate that there was. You don't even have to have that much distance on Ironic. You just kind of, like, touch the wall and then boom. And it does actually kill enemies, too. I've tested it. Well, let me read what M says here, actually. Um, you're not going to please everyone. You don't need to be cautious about bad faith criticism, but sometimes even slight improvements can go a long way. Okay, that's enough words from a game dev. Um, oh, and then hopefully actually a, a try and apply would get suggested in order to improve on a product rather than shut out all all criticisms because the my feelings thing. Yeah, I mean that's true too. You know, because like yeah, it, it does hurt when you when you aren't able to follow through on like a game you were playing for a while. But yeah, that's why it's important to take criticism as well. I I, I think it's like take it with a grain of salt because so, you need to also know how to work through. Like good criticisms and bad, because there there are some criticisms that were just like lol game bad, and no one gives any sort of reason as to why, and it could be just frustrations. And I can admit when I like I'm having my frustrations too, but ultimately, I feel like um, you know, it, it's important to uh, help our fellow like Sonic fan creators like improve as well. Oh, I'm cheating. <laughs> yeah, can't please everyone. I'm jamming. True, Johnny. Yeah, Knuckles be jamming. All right, now there was a t Easter egg. I thought you could only get his tails up here. Uh, th 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 this, homie, I'm gonna need you to leave me alone. Thank you. But I, I want to see what happens if Knuckles touches it, because I think you can climb up here. I don't think so Sonic might be able to get up here, but it's probably too high for him. Yeah, it's up there. Okay, so once you find it, you just find it. Yeah. When you touch that, it would say secret found, and that was just kind of it. But yeah. Uh, Tails gets his uh, super flicky army of death, too, and uh, yeah, that's about it. But uh, no, that's, uh, that's the whole game. Um, we, we've already run through it, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut it right here. Because, um, you know, we've, um, 
we pretty much covered everything that XG has to offer at this point. And it, it, it's really just fascinating to think about like um, the, the comparison between this and Triple Trouble 16-bit and how so much love was put into TT 16-bit. Um, and we see how like, you know, uh, Noah and team kind of learned from mistakes of the past and really made sort of a true sequel to uh, like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But I don't think it can be stressed enough how important it was that XG was finished because as I said before, XG kind of crawled and walked so that um, so that Triple Trouble 16-bit could run. So it cannot be stressed enough how important it was to see the progress of our humble Sonic fan community. We are genuinely, genuinely lucky. So uh, once again to Nightmare, I'm grateful for you reaching out and grateful for you finishing the game because I, I, I think you deserve a round of applause for you know just you know persevering and like actually finishing out what um, what may have never been finished at all. And, you know, it only makes me respect both XG and Triple Trouble 16-bit uh, even more. And as far as all of our other creators who, you know, feel like you haven't quite hit the mark this year or you're not sure if your project will become anything, stop doubting yourselves. Because, like, you know, if you stick with it and you want it bad enough um, and, and you, like, learn from your criticisms and learn to take the good with the bad and, like, you know, put in the good and, like, you know, just ignore the bad, then um, you'll, you'll go far. You know, I mean, I guess you could say I'm a developer myself since, like, I'm working on uh, Sonic Elements and everything. But then again, I'm not one to talk since I'm certainly no coder. Uh, my role is basically just write the story, write the music, and work on the voice acting and stuff. Um, but um, I, I think it's worth being said to just, uh, you know, just just keep going with uh, with what your dreams are. And uh, and don't let anyone stop you. That's, that's really what the spirit of Sage and, you know, our humble Sonic fan community is. <laughs> And it's like I always say, my friends, they can't brand you a loser as long as you don't quit. So don't quit. Prove them wrong. Prove all of your doubters wrong, because that's, that's what it's all about. Anyway, my name is Lightning Thunderbolt, and uh, we're going to sign off for now. Um, uh, but yeah, we're going to see if there's anyone to raid. Oh, Kiki and Dragon is streaming uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So you know what? Let's go see how they're doing. Uh, give, a, give a warm welcome from the Thunderbolt squad. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and raid them. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and hop off. Uh, look forward to more content from us on Friday when we uh, get back to streaming our uh, perfect stat, All S Chaos Chow. We are on the road to that. So uh, that is going to go ahead and do it for us. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next time. And until then, as always, keep on staying way past cool. Have yourselves a good night, everyone.